What's good people? It's your man CJ Williams for Coachless Theory. In this video, we're taking a look at G-Unit Records, ranking their releases from worst to best. Note, this list will not include any 50 Cent albums as we already have his solo list on the channel. Be sure to check that out. Also, this list will not include any mixtapes or EPs, but will include albums that were released jointly with G-Unit Records and another label. So do us a favor, hit that like button, subscribe to Coachless Theory, and tap that super thanks to keep the lights on. On to the list. Number 13, G-Unit, Terminate On Sight. Kicking off the list is the second and last album from the group G-Unit. Originally titled Shoot to Kill, by the time this album dropped, signs of the end were clear. Released five years after their debut, the group's members had all dropped solos, some multiple. But in 2008, member Young Buck had one foot out the door as he was only featured on four records, while the now free Tony Yayo is featured much more than on the original. This turns out to be a detriment to the album as the talent discrepancy in Yayo and Buck is fairly wide. Also, the production isn't as strong as previous G-Unit albums. The result was a disappointing sophomore effort from the once powerful Gorilla Unit. On a positive note, the song You So Tough was hard, especially 50's verse that went at T.I. Definitely a sleeper diss. Number 12, Lil Scrappy, Bred to Die, Born to Live. The true debut solo album from ATL rapper Lil Scrappy was a joint release between Little John's BME label and 50's G-Unit Records. You can see influences from both CEOs as John's fingerprints are on some of the production, while 50's flow and cadences can be heard on the album as well. G-Unit members Young Buck, Olivia, and even 50 Cent make appearances. Production is strong and helps make up for what Scrappy may lack in vocal talent. The biggest issue with the album is that it simply came out in the wrong era. Yes, Crunk was popular, but many of the records had Scrappy rapping full 360 bar verses back then because it was the norm. Nowadays, shorter records aren't uncommon and we believe that would be a better approach to a scrap album. The album did produce a hit with Money in the Bank and would have solid records like Nigga What's Up and the standout Pac sampled Living in the Projects. Number 11, Mob Deep, Blood Money. In 2005, 50 was looking to expand his G-Unit Records roster by adding New York groups Mob Deep and M.O.P. The infamous mob would drop their one and only project on the label, Blood Money, May of 2006. The signing made all the sense in the world as both 50 and Mob rep Queens. Musically though, it turned out to be a mixed bag. There's a few highlights on the album, Put Them In Their Place, Click Click, and Pearly Gates featuring 50 were strong. But the standout record is Daydreaming, a banger that finds P and Half reflecting on their come up. The album would be okay, but a forgettable effort that would end up being the last album from the group as Prodigy would focus more on solo efforts before his passing in 2017. Number 10, Lloyd Banks, Rodden Apple. Originally titled The Big Withdrawal, Banks lost his album after a night with two ladies that resulted in the unmastered copy of the album being leaked. Scrapping that and returning to the studio to record more records, what we received was an average project, but one that didn't have anywhere near the impact as his stellar debut. On paper, Rotten Apple looks good. Production from Havoc, Ron Browse, and Ninth Wonder. Features from G-Unit, Scarface, Rakim, and 8-Ball. But the results were somewhat of a letdown. The formulaic lead single, Hands Up, is basically on fire part two, and joints like Life, Stranger, and Addicted with Music Soul Child are forgettable B-sides. There's a few joints, though, that save the album from being a complete throwaway. New York, New York with Yayo, One Night Stand, and Get Clapped featuring Mob Deep all work. And for anyone wondering what the leaked album sounded like, it's on YouTube for your listening pleasure. Number nine, Tony Yayo, Thoughts of a Predicate Felon. During a year and a half bid for weapons possession, Yayo was forced to watch his hometown homie, 50 Cent, blow up from behind bars. Not long after his release in 2004, Yayo dropped his debut album the following year. Not as talented as an MC as Banks or Buck, there's not many memorable bars on the album. Now that's not the worst thing in the world because we at Coachless Theory are firm believers in playing your position and doing what works for you. So I the album does have good records thanks mostly to its stellar production and features. So Seductive, We Don't Give a Fuck, and I Know You Don't Love Me all feature one or more G-Unit members and are stronger for it. Then there's the strong choruses thanks to Joe on Curious and Jagged Edge on Project Princess, but it's the scene-stealing features from Shady Records' Obi Trice and Eminem on Drama Setter that really stand out. M 
bodies the hook and the underrated Obi Trice delivers a solid 16 over a fire M produced beat. But it's when Yayo is on his own you really see the struggles. Joints like Love My Style, Pimpin', and G Shit are listenable mostly because of the beats. With that being said, Yayo, an average artist, dropped an above average album, which at the end of the day is likely the best you can ask for. Number eight, Lloyd Banks, Hunger for More 2. It's always tricky when a rapper announces their new album and it's the sequel to their best work, especially after disappointing fans like Banks did with Rotten Apple. So here we are in 2010, six years removed from the debut album, and Hunger for More 2 drops. Did it live up to the original? No. However, most sequels don't, but that's not to say there wasn't heat on this album. Father Time, On the Double, and Started Up with Fab, Swiss, and Kanye were dope. Banks made waves with the single Beamer, Benz, or Bentley, featuring Joel Santana. The banger would chart on Billboard, spawn several remixes, and eventually get Banks a gold plaque. Other strong records include I Don't Deserve You with Jeremiah and Take Him to War with Tony Yayo. The last nine 50 Cent G-Unit Records album would be a solid bounce back effort from Blue Hefner, who would continue to drop under the radar mixtapes before he finally released an album in 2021. Number seven, Young Buck, Buck the World. After dropping three eh, projects in a row with 2006 Mob Deep's Blood Money, Banks' Rotten Apple, and Lil Scrappy's debut, the unit needed a banger in the worst way. Young Buck would deliver on the one and only G Unit release in 2007 with Buck the World. His sophomore album wouldn't have the same unit cohesion as his debut, as the only G Unit member to feature was 50 Cent, but that was okay as Buck had plenty of relationships outside of the label to call on. For the most part, they work. Jeezy, T.I., Ball and G, and Bun B are among the strong supporting cast. The first half of the album is its strongest, with harder records like Push em Back, Bush Your Head, and Get Buck, tailor-made for listening in the whip. Those are balanced with deep cuts like the title track featuring Life Jennings, and Slow Your Roll featuring Linkin Park lead vocalist Chester Bennington. This was around the time Buck was starting his own label, G-Unit South, and this record proved he wasn't a one-album wonder. Speaking of one album wonders. When you think about people who had one fire album then fell completely off, who comes to mind first? Leave a comment and let us know. We definitely could name a few on our own and we may or may not be working on that list. Stay tuned. Number six, Freeway, Free At Last. Another joint release makes our list, this time with Freeway's sophomore release, Free At Last. And depending on what website you're on, this release was either an official collab between Rockefeller Records and G-Unit Records or 50 Cent just executive produced it. Either way, we're counting on this list and yes, it will be on that Rockefeller list too, coming soon. After dropping a successful debut on The Rock, we're not exactly sure why they decided to partner with G-Unit for this release, but it's likely part of the reason why he took four years off in between projects. Nonetheless, this album was another strong project from the Philly MC. Things start off superbly with the Marsha Ambrose's featured This Can't Be Real intro. When it comes to features, she don't miss. The lead single, Rockefeller Billionaires with Jay-Z, and take it to the top with 50 or solid as well. Free shows versatility on this collabs with Scarface, Baby Don't Do It, as well as Walk With Me with Busta and Jada also banging. Free was able to hold his own as well on solo records like When They Remember, Free At Last, and I Cry. A strong second album from an underrated artist, Free At Last was a welcomed addition to the deep G-Unit and Rockefeller catalog. Number five, Get Rich or Die Trying soundtrack. In 2005, 50 took his talents to Hollywood and dropped his biopic, Get Rich or Die trying, borrowing from his debut album title. The same week, the soundtrack dropped, featuring a newly expanded G-Unit roster with new members like Spider Loke, Olivia, and groups Mob Deep and M.O.P. You can't forget rapper-turned-preacher Mace. Although we know Mace never technically signed a G-Unit, but they were in talks. I guess that rumored $2 million price tag Puff was asking for was too pricey for Fifth to call up. Anyway, the newcomers were accompanied by the original members Buck, Banks, and for one record, Tony Yayo. What we got was one of the stronger soundtracks in recent memory. There are bangers galore. 50 solo joints like Hustler's Ambition, Window Shopper, and What If. Posse cuts like I Don't Know Officer, featuring a scene-stealing Murder Mace verse, I'll Whip Your Head Boy with 50 and Buck, and Things Change with Banks and Spider Loke. But one of the dopest records was also a major letdown. M.O.P.'s When Death Becomes You was complete flames. 50 murdered the hook, showing instant chemistry with the group. Unfortunately, a deal never materialized into an album, so it was 
grand opening, grand closing for the collabs. Although the soundtrack is not perfect, there are definitely a few skips, and the game left the label before this drop, so no features by him. It is still a top three soundtrack in the last 15 years, easy. Number four, G-Unit, Beg for Mercy. The four-man group, originally consisting of 50 Cent, Lloyd Banks, and Tony Yayo, added Young Buck to kind of fill in for Yayo during his incarceration, released their major label debut late 2003. Dropping the same day as Jay-Z's Black Album and Tupac's Resurrection soundtrack, the group album was a banger that truly showed off the strengths of each member. Well, with the exception of Yayo, who is only featured on two records, this actually isn't the worst thing in the world because Buck meshed in just fine with his new teammates. The trio take turns bodying records like Poppin' Them Things, Lay You Down, and Gangsta Shit. The production is top notch on the album with Red Spider, Shy Money XL, No ID, and Dr. Dre lacing the unit. Dre was two for two on the album, supplying heat for Poppin' Them Things and G'd Up. Each artist had solo records too. Fifth with I'm So Hood, Buck with Footprints, and Banks with Smile, with 50 riding shotgun for the hook on the latter two. Speaking of Smile, did you notice the track Eye for Eye and Smile, two back-to-back -back records on the album have damn near identical intros? The strings sound exactly alike, and even 50 comes in with his yeah ad-lib on both. Yeah. Yeah. Did they mean to do that? Yeah, anyway, some could argue the album is slightly formulaic with the typical 50 hook, then fifth on the first verse, basically being the layout for the majority of the album. And they wouldn't be wrong, but it works. So in this instance, there was no need to try and reinvent the wheel. Also, no appearances by the game as he was signed after this album was completed, but he did appear in two music videos. Before we get to our top three, what is your top three favorite non 50 cent G Unit albums? Leave a comment below, let me know. All right, back to the list. Number three, Lloyd Banks, Hunger for More. After the release of the G-Unit album, it was time for the solo projects. The first up was Lloyd Banks with the Hunger for More. Blue Hefner picked up where the group album left off with an absolute banger of a project. Punchlines, diverse production, and poignant lyrics make the album one of the stronger of the label. I'm So Fly, If You So Gangster, and Work Magic were dope, but it's the second half of the album that works the best. From Karma, When the Chips Are Down with the Game, Till the End featuring Nate Dogg, Die One Day, and Then then South Side Story? Now that's how you end an album. The line between number three and the number two spot on this list is razor thin and can honestly be switched up depending on the day. Speaking of, number two, Young Buck, straight out of Cashville. The only Southern artist on the roster, Young Buck had a lot to prove when 50 decided to add him to an already somewhat established G-Unit squad. On top of that, he named his album after his hometown of Nashville, Tennessee, which is a relatively untapped hip hop space, but Buck was able to fit in with the unit like a glove and dropped the best record at the time since 50's debut. Joints like Bonafide Hustler, I'm a Soldier, and Prices on My Head showed Buck could rap on East Coast inspired production to fit in with his New York teammates. On the flip side, records like Shorty Wanna Ride, Taking Hits, and Stomp were more down south inspired, which he could do just as well. Speaking of Stomp, that record is notable for the ludicrous verse in which he dissed then rival T.I., who was also featured. The story goes, T.I.'s verse was on the record first, in which there was a bar that could be perceived as a diss to Luda. Buck wanted Luda on the song too, but out of respect, he played T.I.'s verse before him hopping on. He even checked with T.I. to see if it was cool to get Luda on there, tip agreed. Then the Luda verse happened. Allegedly, T.I.'s camp requested Luda change his verse or they wouldn't clear the T.I. verse. Obviously, that didn't happen, so Buck was going to get his partner in Rhyme and G-Unit South artist D.T.A.Y. to replace T.I.'s verse, which also didn't happen. So newest member of the game was thrown on their last minute. Number one, the game, the documentary. Signed to Dr. Dre in 2003, the game was placed with G-Unit to help complete his debut album. Under 50's wing, Chuck Taylor would drop an album that slapped from beginning to end. Take it from the top, we get a fire-ass intro for one, then game glides over Dre's hard-hitting drums and piano loops on West Side Story, followed by Kanye's signature chopped up soul samples on Dreams, then the 50 Cent assisted single, Hate It or Love It. Not an expense was spared on this album as it's got big boy features like Eminem, Mary 
Mary J, Busta Rhymes, and Faith Evans. But also on the production side, Dre handled seven beats, Kanye, Havoc, Just Blaze, and Timbaland are there. Game would be classified as a gangster rapper at heart. After all, the album was originally titled Nigga with an Attitude Volume 1, but he showed versatility on standouts like the reflective Start From Scratch, Don't Need Your Love, and Like Father Like Son, giving the project balance. Executive produced by 50, his fingerprints are all over it. And if you let him tell it, he wrote more of the album than we know about, but that's another story for another day. The documentary is a classic debut album and an essential body of work when West Coast hip hop was relatively quiet. That's it for our list. Did we get it right? Give us your theory in the comment section below and subscribe so you don't miss a list. I'm CJ Williams for Coachless Theory. Till the next time, I'm out.